Hello friends, my name is Sterling Long and today I will be leading you through how to attach something to the camera without making it a child of the camera in virtual reality. So there's a couple reasons that one might want to do this. The first one being like the Unity UI that springs into your view, for example, um, if you're using the Oculus Quest, which is what I have, it'll have a little bar to say, can't find your controllers. And it won't be stuck in your view, but if you look away, it'll slowly make its way back into your view. The second thing is, um, for example, attached objects that you want to follow you, but not exactly. So if you've played Vader Immortals, the tool belt that you have with the lightsaber and the Hydra Spanner would be an example of what you can do with what I'm about to teach you. So, um, the first off, uh, I assume that you already have a virtual reality system set up, so in Unity this includes an XR rig with a camera offset and main camera. I've deleted the controllers because I don't necessarily care about those. Nice directional light, XR interaction manager, and I have an event system because I'll be making a simple UI to test this with. So. I assume that you have something that you want to follow your camera mm -hmm. and in this case I will hop right in and just start making something that I want to follow mine. So I'll just make an empty game object. I'm going to call it attached to camera. And inside of this game object I'm going to create a UI canvas. And then I'm going to make it a lot smaller because they're always very big, which makes things interesting. I'll just set its position to zero, zero, two. Just to be sure, I attached camera. I want this to be centered at zero, zero, zero. This way, my canvas is just a little bit offset from my camera. I'm going to now add some UI, some text. I'll just call it swag. I'm going to center this just so it looks nicer. Okay, so now I have the thing that I want to attach to my camera and we're going to work on attaching it now. So the first thing we're going to do is add a new script to our attached to camera object. I'm just going to call this script attached to camera as well. I'll create and add. And once that finishes loading, we're going to edit it. Edit script. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the start behaviors, I don't necessarily care too much about them. I'm going to paste all the variables that we need in here and then I'll explain them. So the first thing that we need is the camera transform. This is the camera that we'll be following the rotation of and the position. The second thing that we need is the offset from the camera. So if we want to put the camera or this object at waist height, kind of like a tool belt or the lightsaber belt in Vader Immortals, we can do so. Then we have the turn buffer in degrees, and what this does is it defines how closely this object is going to follow the camera. The turn speed is how fast it'll rotate to follow the camera. We want this to be relatively small because we'll be using the lerp method. And then last but not least, we have lock pitch, which essentially lets us uh, lock the pitch of the player's camera. So the pitch is when they look up and down so that the this object doesn't follow that rotation. If you want to have a tool belt like there is in Vader Immortals, then you don't you want to lock the pitch. If you notice the tool belt in Vader Immortals when you look down at it, it doesn't rotate back away from you. It stays where it is. It'll only rotate when you look left or right. So, 
from here, we the first thing that we need to do in our update loop is set the local position of this object to be the camera transforms local position plus our own offset from the camera. So if we wanted this to be at waist height, our offset from the camera would be something like we'd set the y value to be negative negative 2 or negative 1.5. Next up we want to get the Euler angles for our, from our camera. We'll call this camera Euler. Camera transform. Audition. Euler angles. And then for me I want to zero out the z-axis of these Euler angles. The reason I want to do that is because I don't necessarily care about rotating when a player tilts their head left or right. Uh, you might, but I don't care about that. If you would like to mess around with it, you may. I'm going to zero this out. Next up is, if we want to lock the pitch, we also don't want to rotate the x-axis. So we will zero out the x-axis as well the x being the pitch, looking up and down. Then we're going to reconstruct our quaternion, our target quaternion, using the oil angles from camera oil. And then we're going to get the angle between our own rotation and our target rotation, our target quaternion. And if this angle is greater than our turn buffer in degrees, then we want to rotate. So we set our own transform.rotation equal to quaternion.lerp transform.rotation target quaternion. Oops. And we want this to be turn speed. So what quaternion.lerp does is it uh, gets a quaternion that is between our current rotation and our target rotation based on the turn speed that we have. So 0 0.03 means that we're very much choosing to transform our current rotation and we're rotating just a little bit towards the target quaternion. This makes our rotation feel very, very smooth as opposed to choppy. If you want to mess around with the turn speed to make it faster or slower, I would still recommend to keep it in a lower number range. The closer that it gets to one, the more this object that is attached to the camera will hop to the rotation of the camera. The next thing that we're going to need to do is set the camera transform and our offset from camera in Unity. So let's go back to Unity. And we have our camera transform. We're just going to drag from our main camera into the camera transform. And that's really the only thing that we need to do. I'm going to lock pitch as well and offset from the camera by negative 0.5 so that it's a bit below my field of sight. Here are the results and a couple different iterations based on different values. Thank you for watching folks, that's all for today and I hope that this helps someone make a super cool tool belt that may or may not have a lightsaber on it.